Welcome to HPE Discover Las Vegas 2025. We're 6-5 in the booth. We have Dan Wabel, Global Chief Data Officer with HPE. I love these in the booth sessions, Dave. This is where when I was a customer, this is where I came and got free advice. These folks have seen it all, they've done it all, and they're prepared to give not just free consulting, but a way forward. Let's start with a million dollars worth of free consulting right now. Dan, let's talk about this idea of an AI program. What is it? How do you scale it within an, inter an enterprise? And, and give us an example of how you're doing this within HPE. Awesome, thank you. First off, thanks for having me, guys. Um, you know, it's fantastic to be here in Vegas at Discover. We just came out of the sphere with Antonio's keynote, 14,000 people. The energy is absolutely palpable here. Um, and we talk about an enterprise AI program, and I think we need to break it down into the what and the strategy and the how, how do you execute the program? So when we're thinking about the strategy, we want to connect our AI strategy with our business strategy. We want to make it business driven, both on the customer facing ROI side, what do those opportunities look like? And on the efficiency side, how do we automate business processes and start to simplify and enable some of these new AI capabilities? Um, so I think that's the what. On the how side, we tried to simplify it into three steps or three components. One is your platforms and your foundation. Two is your governance program that's going to kind of allow you to interface with IT in the business. And the third area are use cases. So what are the business use cases that you're going to drive? Each one of those kind of segments of your AI program, we can unpack a little bit more, but we try to take um, kind of a simplified view of how do you build an AI program and what we've done here at HPE over the last several years. So Dan, last year around this time, everyone was talking chatbots as the primary use case for AI. We've all matured beyond agentic AI. Can you talk to us about the rocks? You know, you talked about, you know, these three pillars, but what are some of the rocks that large enterprises and, and, and customers in general are going to run into as they look to scale their agentic AI efforts? Right. Yeah, there's a number of challenges and, and I'll, be, I'll be very honest, we're all dealing with these challenges together. Um, I think the longest pole in the tent challenge is going to be the data. I think providing context to the models. The models are already incredibly powerful, what is it, every six or seven months, their, their capabilities are, are doubling. So Moore's Law is two years. We're, we're moving much more quickly than that. Um, but I think context is going to be the most important thing for the model. So that's both on the structured data side and on the unstructured data side. And you know many organizations have spent time and invested in structured data. It's unstructured data where I think that's where we need to focus a little bit more and think about how we manage all of our knowledge, how do we manage you know, thousands, tens of thousands, in our case, millions of documents, gain that context so that our systems, our AI systems can be much more intelligent and informed and have that um, kind of knowledge and context going forward. So I think that's one of the, the big challenges we have or the big rocks with Agentic. Another one is connectivity around APIs and interfacing with different legacy systems. So as a large enterprise, uh, we have an enormous legacy ecosystem of applications and platforms across the company. And we've now implemented um, a formal program around MCP, Model Context Protocol, which of course allows us to interface with these platforms um, through an agentic methodology. Um, and then what we're able to do is take the context and leverage that context to drive activity. So we're moving from chatbots, like you said, to actually execution. And that leads us to another area of challenge, which is risks, right? How do we manage risks in this world? Um, and that's where your AI governance program becomes extremely important. Uh, and I think, you know, we think about risk both in terms of regulatory risk and ethical risk. So on the regulatory side, uh, we've had structured data uh, kind of regulations in place for a long time, but now we have a new set of AI regulations and they're fragmented across geographies. So it's very, very important to be able to understand end-to-end -end how your AI platform and how your AI ecosystem is running, because ultimately, all that is going to be regulated. You're gonna to have to be able to explain how things happen and why things happen. You have to understand what data is feeding these models, and the regulations could be different, right, depending on what geography you're operating in, so there's sovereign concerns. 
Uh, so there's a lot of complexity in, in all of this and unpacking it. We're learning as we go, but I do think you know governance is critically important and a big rock uh, for us. Dave, yeah, I asked him for rocks, he gave me boulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Well, yeah, and among those boulders, you know, the idea that data is important isn't new. But for a long time, we talked about enterprise content management. Um, content kind of carries with it a connotation of sort of generic stuff. I don't worry. HPE would argue that we've moved in the age of EKM, enterprise knowledge management. What, what does that mean? So EKM, I think, is maybe uh, one of the unsung challenges that we have in front of us in the AI space because of all these documents, and by the way, multimodal, right? So we have video, we have audio, we have presentations, PDFs, all these different documents out there. And it's not just about feeding those, the context from those documents into the AI models, it's actually about managing the full life cycle of knowledge uh, at the enterprise level. And that's how we're going to build um, really this, this entire cohort of knowledge workers that we're going to start overseeing with Agentic as we move forward. So it's all connected, and I, I do think that enterprise knowledge management uh, is an area that companies are going to need to focus on and spend much more time learning how to manage that life cycle of knowledge uh, as we transition into this, this AI era. You know, I want to double click on that really quickly, because when you think about not managing that knowledge, um, are you trading these models with those knowledge, with, 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 with those pieces of knowledge? Is this, is this fine tuning or is it retrieval or is it both? It really can be both. I think it depends on the use case. I will say though, I think what we're going to see as we move forward is more advancements in RAG capabilities. So um, we offer a product called PCAI, Private Cloud AI. You guys may be familiar with that. It comes prepackaged with a number of accelerators. One of them is called RAG Essentials, uh, which is fantastic, which accelerates your ability to augment a model with context for your organization, dynamically, out of the box. Uh, so it's, that's pretty incredible. I think knowledge graphs are also going to be important for certain use cases, uh, which include fine tuning capabilities. So um, I think it's going to be a mix of methodologies, but I, what I've seen in the last probably three to six months is that RAG is really the lightest weight and quickest way to train your models on your context and your knowledge within your organization. Um, and it's probably also the more affordable way to do this versus building and training models from scratch is extremely expensive. And the benefits actually with the advancements in RAG, all that's kind of coming together. So I think RAG um, is going to be the operating system of Agentic in the future. So I don't think you could have come to an HPE Discover in maybe the past 10 years and not heard the term hybrid clouds. For the first time I can remember, I'm actually seeing hyperscale cloud providers as sponsors to the show on the show floor. Talk to me about the relationship between this AI capability that you're talking about, this data pipeline, the benefits to customers taking this hybrid cloud approach. It's a great question. And I, I truly believe that hybrid is the future. And I think it's shifting because the reality is over 80% of enterprise data is on-prem. Much of that is unstructured data. These are documents and videos, et cetera. And in reality, for these models to be smart enough, especially in the agentic world where we want to become more autonomous, we need to provide excellent context to these models. Is it realistic for us to take all of our data, in our case, millions of files and documents, and move all those documents to the cloud? Or is it going to be more hybrid where in some scenarios we, would, we may want to move AI to the data? Which logically makes more sense. I think it's lighter weight. It's much more cost effective. And at the end of the day, you can still take advantage of cloud for certain workloads, especially for structured data and kind of traditional ML use cases. But I think in the in the future world, as we really start to lean into the agentic era, it's going to become more and more hybrid with more on-prem use cases. They're going to drive a much greater level of transformation versus the, the chatbots that kind of the last year and a half um, have become more prevalent. And you mentioned chatbots. 
there is such thing as Chat HPE, right? <laughs> yeah. What's that all about? Yes, so Chat HPE is our internal platform uh, that we've designed and built. Uh, we've, ne we've originally built this platform to run on Azure OpenAI. So we started building this almost two and a half years ago. So very early in kind of this new gen AI era, let's call it. And uh, what we learned though, as we were building this platform, which you might guess by the name has a chat interface similar to ChatGPT, uh, but the big difference is all of the data, the prompts, all the embeddings, all the documents are completely secure in a separate environment. So we don't have, we kind of eliminated that risk from the equation. The other thing that's important to understand about ChatHP is we built custom guardrails based on HPE policies. So now we can manage the risks in a very fine tuned way that are specific to HPE. And we've taken this platform and we said, okay, now we're running dozens, actually hundreds of different use cases on Chat HP across the company. I mean, we're talking about HR, supply chain, operations, finance, et cetera. But what we're realizing is, as we're scaling this up from, originally we started with a group of 100 users, went to 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, we have 15,000. We're about to unlock 60,000 simultaneous users on Chat HPE, which is incredible. We're moving the platform to run on PCAI for a number of different reasons. And one of them is efficiency and cost management. Another one is security, right, around documents we may not want to move to the cloud. And an another reason we are moving to PCAI is we have much more control of the end-to-end -end experience um, versus when we originally kind of built the prototype in the cloud. When you say PC PCs, meaning meaning an entire model would live on somebody's laptop or served up from an HPE server, both? Yeah. What, what does so it look like? Private cloud AI, um, this is... Oh, I'm sorry, you private cloud, I, I was thinking as in personal computer AI. Yeah. So no, yeah, good Good to differentiate. Yes, yes let me just clarify. Yeah, yeah. Uh, private cloud AI, PC AI, is an on-prem solution, full stack, hardware and software integrated, delivered through HPE and NVIDIA together with um, yeah. HPE for NVIDIA Compute, along with AI Essentials and a number of accelerators that come pre-packaged. So think of it almost like we you're going to have a cloud that can run on-prem in your own private data center, so you don't have to worry about data security. You don't have to worry about, by the way, cost fluctuations, because this is an upfront investment. And then the interesting part with PCA is the more you use it, the better the economies to scale. So it's actually the inverse of the cloud, where the more you're inferencing in the cloud, your costs are going to ramp. Here, it's a different cost structure, right? So if you think about what's going to happen with the Gentech, and you know, we, we went through this kind of forecasting process, and we said we expect interactions on Chat HPE, our internal platform, to grow 10x in the next six months. We expect 100x in the next 18 months, and 1,000 to 10,000 x in the next three to five years. So think about that scaling. Think about the cost to run that environment in the cloud versus an upfront capital investment where now we can encourage more use cases, more innovation, because it's actually cost effective to do that versus in the cloud, eventually you start to think about token usage and managing those costs. So it's really a different way to think about it. And that's why I mentioned earlier, I think hybrid is the way of the future because we're not going to move millions of documents and files into the cloud. It's a little bit cost prohibitive at some point. Why not take AI and move it to the data as opposed to moving data to AI? So Dave, it sounds like it's a lot easier to move AI than it is to move the boulder that's your data. You see what I did there? I, I do, and but all I heard frankly was Keith Townsend was right about hybrid and he's always been right about hybrid. So that's, that's what I heard. For our guest, Dan Wavell, and my co-host, Dave Nicholson, this was a in the booth jam session, two technologists talking to another technologist about the problems faced in the enterprise. Stay tuned for more 6.5 coverage. We're all over HPE Discover, helping you understand how to properly invest in your AI stack to get the business returns you're looking to receive. In Las Vegas, 2025.